resurrection and it seems that people everybody is uh, really um experiencing it we it all resonates with us we are all resurrected every moment this morning we're resurrected so um everything is pretty much experiential and then um so i think we should now look into you know checking in reading up what the author is actually saying and from there we can see the main takeaways we can extract and proceed inshallah so briefly last week we touched upon how um you know if you notice something just like perhaps a building we conclude that it must have a builder similarly when we look at our existence and the universe we conclude that this universe must have an existence giver or a creator i mean there's no denying in that it's just like nobody can deny the sun shining in the horizons and say no the sun does not exist so that's very obvious and so the way the author was building up the momentum was with the second indication where now he's saying, okay, so you experience all this, you notice um, several qualities manifested in creation, definitely it points to something not of the nature of this universe, something we conclude to be an absolute source of existence. So that has been established. And so now in the second indication, uh, our friend Nursi here is walking us through how this um, absolute source that we conclude my existence giver, our creator, cannot just leave here to our own devices without any sort of um, instruction, if you will, or guidance or uh, letting me know exactly what am I to do with my existence here. So just as you go to uh, any educational institution, last week we did emphasize on that, there are instructors, teachers, professors, resources available for you to help out, map out your you know, learning objectives. Similarly, this uh, universe being a school for all of us, so there must be some employees, experts, people who have grasped and ascertained the meaning of this existence to help us and walk us through in our journey here. And so, um, you know, it was interesting how uh, the case has been presented about over living conditions. It is a human condition. We are given existence and we question what is all this for. Um, so my creator, whoever created me in the universe, like what does he expect from me? Why did he create me? If I'm just uh, bound to die by age 100, let's say, or earlier or later, we don't know. Nobody knows the appointed hour. So we have all these existential human questions and we need answers to all of these. So then uh, this employee from the creator of the universe uh, definitely, you know, help us, uh, walks us through, uh, is employed by the creator of the universe to make sense of our human condition otherwise without it we all will be perplexed here we are enjoying existence um, breathing um, eating good food um, some, once in a while we may experience some calamity get sick but you know we all know it's temporary it's transient but at the end of the day the human question remains what does all this point to and so um, let's continue on today with uh, where we left off. So those of you who joined us in, we are reading from the words, page 72. And let's begin, Smila. Is it at all possible that a possessor of infinite inherent beauty should not wish both to behold himself and to display to others 
in numerous mirrors. The charms of his beauty and the allurements of his fairness. Is it at all possible that a possessor of infinite inherent beauty should not wish both to behold himself and to display to others in numerous mirrors the charms of his beauty and the allurements of his fairness? God's messenger is his beloved, making himself beloved of him by means of his worship and holding up a mirror to him. And he's also the bearer of his message making him beloved of men and demonstrating to them the beauty of his names. Is it at all possible that the owner of treasuries full of wondrous miracles, rare and valuable items should not wish and desire to display them to meet man's gaze by means of an expert jeweler, an eloquent describer, thereby revealing his hidden perfections? Is it at all possible that the one who manifests the perfection of all his names in the cosmos by means of his art, by means of artful adornment for man to look upon so that the cosmos comes to resemble a palace decorated with all kinds of wondrous and subtle art should not also designate a teacher and a guide to the wonders of his creation? Is it at all possible that the Lord of the cosmos should not solve by means of a messenger the complex talisman of the aim and purpose of all the changes that take place in the cosmos and the riddle contained in the three difficult questions posed by all beings? What is our origin? What is our destination? What is our purpose? Is it at all possible that the glorious maker who makes himself known to sentient beings by means of his fair creation and who makes himself loved by means of his precious bounties should not also communicate to sentient beings by means of a messenger? what his pleasure desires of them in exchange. Is it at all possible that God should create mankind in a form predisposing it to suffer the consciousness of multiplicity, but also containing the ability to engage in universal worship without at the same time wishing to turn it away from multiplicity to unity by means of a teacher and guide? Is it at all possible that God should create mankind in a form predisposing it to suffer the consciousness of multiplicity, but also containing the ability to engage in universal worship without at the same time wishing to turn it away from multiplicity to unity by means of a teacher and guide? There are Numerous other functions of prophethood, each of which is a decisive proof that divinity necessarily implies messengership. So pretty much what's the happening in this um, rhetorical questions or just, um, I would say, you know, thought-provoking questions that the author is presenting is really, there's this need for uh, like a teacher or someone to instruct us about what all this richness that we experience within ourselves and all around us, what is all this about? So pretty much if you take a textbook, um, I'm sure most of you must have taken some kind of science um, or chemistry and physics usually, um, they have like these big textbooks, but um, definitely just by looking at the textbook, you know, it's something meaningful in there, but you open it up and there's a lot that does not make sense. So you definitely need a teacher, uh, most likely a professor and then um, an instructor as well, and then study groups and you can name it, right? So you need all of this to help you understand that textbook. So similarly, you and I, we are a rich textbook 
uh, including this universe is a very rich textbook. So definitely this book, there's a lot to be discovered, a lot to make sense of, and uh, we need um, sort of like help, aid, tutoring to help me read it, comprehend what it's saying. Otherwise, I know it's saying a lot of meaningful things, but um, I just cannot really uh, make sense of it, you know, for the purpose of its existence. And in order to do that, definitely we are in need of um, is an employee that's representing my human self in the form of a messenger. So pretty much, um, you know, the role of a teacher is just to help you decipher, unravel what is already in you. Um, there's nothing extra that is uh, being taught by the teacher. The teacher, he or she is just helping you uh, understand and make sense of uh, what you already know. And so what we notice around us, all of our human feelings, emotions, different ways the universe present us with different seasons. So in the East Coast, specifically New York City, it's a Saturday morning. It's um, a little cloudy for a spring late morning. And so, you know, gee, we wonder, wait a minute, it was a nice sunny day yesterday and suddenly what's going on? What's up, right? So the same thing with our human feelings and emotions, we go through the same thing. And so, you know, we need help trying to make sense of uh, what is all this point to, how am I to utilize myself, how am I to utilize my feelings, um, emotions in the perfect way, in the way when I say perfect, I mean in the way that they ought to be utilized. Otherwise, um, um, the human journey here would just be futile. So we definitely need people who have, who are making sense of their existence as well and uh, can help direct our spiritual side or really the needs of our spirit or the heart uh, to the right direction. So um, it's interesting how intellectually also, you know, we need to make sense of what we experience, but at the same time, the heart needs to be satisfied as well. So with this, I am just going to check in and see if there is um, any comments from anyone thus far at any point feel free to raise your hand if not then yeah it's pretty much uh, self-explanatory you know uh, and let's see what the author says but Ali Marmer go ahead and thank you assalamu alaikum so second indication seems to be suggesting that the beauty is prevalent in the world, in the creation out there, yes. But uh, what does it mean? Uh, the beauty is everywhere in the, in the creation. Also human experiences demonstrate that it shows that um, there are some things that we don't like, of course, we have to understand that the beauty in creation, not my relationship with the things that I may feel uh, to run away, to shun away from them. But in the creation, we have to notice that the beauty in bringing the things in the creation. For example, if a teacher prepares a multiple choice test, there are interesting um, uh, interesting options 
looks like uh, they must be wrong only one of them let's say there are five options and four of them are wrong one of them are five what is the point uh, presenting the wrong options there in order to make the student alert that no don't fall in this it looks like right but it is not like right so teaching how to really choose the best which is the right answer to the question that is how human beings learn we learn through um, what is that word <laughs> i always find it difficult uh, try and trial error. trial and error you got it yeah yeah try and error so that is uh, this error is the best means of learning and understanding how beautiful the creation is how be beautiful this multiple choice test is uh, provided in order to teach me exactly uh, the right answer which is the right answer so the main point here in the second indication yes there are, there is an infinite beauty manifesting itself in creation in bringing the things into existence we know that uh, we have some questions concerns especially based on meaning what is the meaning in having uh, this test and why i am put in this exam or in this training to learn at the end of the day i'm going to die and disappear but i have contrary feelings we emphasize on the importance of this contrariness in creation as far as human expectations in the uh, on the one hand on the other the reality of the creation that everything is transient and we are going to uh, go away from this world what is the point of course uh, we can take the simple example uh, an expert or and an engineer produces a new gadget let's say it is a complicated one and provides the answers or aids to human needs but we don't know how to use it how to utilize it Uh, so i need to learn how to use my computer how to use my iphone at the end i get used to it but i need to learn i have to go through a training education so the creation is uh, creation seems to be yes there are many interesting things awesome things are going on out there but at the same time we don't understand the meaning the purpose in this kind of creation why is it so complicated let's say this uh, machine looks like wonderful but i know only a few functions that he perfor it performs i don't know the others because i haven't discovered it this engineer must provide an instructor or not an some instructors in order to teach how to use utilize and get benefit from it from this machine so as the text says expert jeweler Uh, expert jeweler is the beloved of this maker the creator beloved creator he is this person has been employed by the uh, or trained educated how this machine works and 
as we discover the details, we understand that, oh, it is very handy because I have to do a lot of things, even myself, I don't know what to do with them. Even my uh, human qualities, I have many human qualities, I don't know what are they good for. I don't know. Why am I, if you like, decorated with, with these kinds of wonderful beings, creation out there, and also in my creation, what am I going to do with them? I don't know. So I need an instructor to teach me so that I will go into the details of this machine and use them, the, I, I refer it to the creation, utilize them in order to understand the purpose of my existence as well as the existence of the universe. That is why the one who produces the machine must educate experts to send out in order to teach the people how to benefit from these materials out there in the creation and within themselves, how they are going to satisfy their human expectations, feelings, in order to have a meaningful existence. If an expert or instructor learns from the engineer the best way of first understanding how to utilize the machine and teaching people how to benefit from them. That will be the one who is appointed, he is going to be appointed as the instructor of the, if you like, the universe and human nature in order to discover the meaning, the purpose in our existence. That is called the blood of the creator, God's blood. That's why the prophets are called God's beloved. Yeah, uh, in Arabic, it's uh, very famous, uh, Habibullah. So God's beloved must be the expert jeweler to teach me. If we understand that this mission provides many things that we need, but we cannot discover ourselves. I don't know, for example, without the instructor, the messenger employed, this expert, expert jeweler, expert teacher, trained by the creator in order to teach me what to do with, the, with my human abilities and what is out there in the universe. That must be done. That is why the text you read said divine, sorry, divinity. It means divine being's nature, which is absolute, infinite. So he creates the universe with infinite qualities, with infinite qualities. So he creates the universe with this, sorry, this I was disturbed <laughs> with the telephone. So infinite qualities and he enabled men's potentiality to understand them, but without being educated, we cannot understand it. So this blood, God's blood, and ex or expert jeweler, educated, trained by God, must be employed. The divinity necessarily implies messengership. That's what we have to understand. Without, without uh, the instructor, we can try to use the 
computer, for example, in this uh, practical example, we may do something right, but we may spoil it because we haven't gone through the training, education under the instructorship of these experts. That is why we need messengers definitely employed by the one who created this universe in such a wonderful way and as well as he created human beings in such a wonderful way that human capacity himself although has the ability but they cannot really uh, put into practice human beings cannot put it into practice Unless I am instructed, I am uh, educated, trained in it. For example, we all come to this world with perfect human beings. But if we don't get training, for example, let's say, I don't know, chemistry, we don't know what to do in this field. We, we have to get the education and then we discover that oh, I have the ability to produce something through chemical reactions in the lab, for example. Otherwise, I have the potentiality, simple example, I say, I have the potentiality to, to speak Japanese. But if I don't learn it, if I don't get the instruction through different ways, I cannot speak Japanese. It's a reality. I cannot say even one word in Japanese. It doesn't mean that I don't have the potentiality. That is why uh, the one who created me with this enormous capacity must of necessary necessity employ an expert jewelers who will help me understand the beauty in the creation. Oh, in the acts of creation, there is an enormous, uh, uh, unimaginable qualities manifested there. Who this qual the owner of the qualities is? What is the purpose of manifesting? It is uh, his infinite qualities, and what is the purpose of? creating the, uh, the qualities in me to be able to understand it if only I get the instruction, education. That is why the institution of messengership is necessary. If someone really ignores it, he will definitely mess up with the machine because he hasn't got for example, give it, uh, give the computer to a person who doesn't know anything, who hasn't received any instruction how to use it, what you will end up, he will end up with something interesting may come up. But at the end, the computer will lock itself up to him. Why? He will definitely make <laughs> many confused mistakes so that uh, what, the, uh, what we do with the universe, we try without uh, getting the instructions, education through the uh, expert jewelers. What do people do? Many endless history is full of self-rejecting, self-rejecting each other, opposing each other, criticizing each other, the chain of philosophical argumentations throughout human life. One says, that is the ultimate word I understood to say about the nature of the universe existence. And no sooner than five or ten years, another theory comes up and collapses it, Berman rejects it, demonstrates the faults in it. We shouldn't mess up with the creation. We shouldn't mess up with the universe by ourselves. We should be realistic enough 
to get the education from the blood of the creator who has really learned, educated by the maker of the universe in order to demonstrate the beauty of the creation out there. Sorry, it was an interesting uh, text actually to see how the beauty needs an instructor to, uh, to be demonstrated to human beings so that they will benefit from it. Thank you. Chazakallah, Brother Ali, for a thorough understanding of uh, what we experience in the universe. At the end of the day, it's all about purpose, hashtag purpose. We all look for a purpose. Everything here serves a purpose. And it's really um, in getting to know this purpose that I need help from uh, others who have trained themselves um, to also help me decipher my purpose. So it's an uh, interesting human journey. And um, also with um, everything that serves a purpose, really definitely we all admire beauty, we all appreciate beauty. And then at the end of the day, what is the purpose of uh, you and I experiencing this beauty? Um, so we definitely uh, need some direction to um, um, shift this, um, these feelings and human expectations in the right direction. And, um, and if there is a teacher out there who's amazing, I mean, I think we can all relate to in our education system or like even a tutor it doesn't have to be teacher usually. Um, someone who actually helped you because they themselves were enlightened with the subject. And so they knew how to exactly disseminate it uh, and break it down for your understanding. Then you not only adore the teacher, but you also um, adore, I mean, uh, get mesmerized with the teaching as well. So Alhamdulillah, this is, um, this was very exciting. Thank you for sharing that. And I see that there's a comment from, Ryan Hunter. Ryan, if uh, you can please read your comment, that would be great. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, thank you so much. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I was. I just accidentally left the um, meeting. Now I'm back in. But I, I think I had said. Um, so, so I don't actually have the have the chat uh, here. But, but I think I had said that. Um, I found your explanation um, very beautiful and very helpful, um, mashallah. Um, particularly, you made a connection between uh, prophethood and, um, I don't remember my exact words, but I was talking about prophethood and um, uh, teaching. And and in my life, um, I, I'm actually a, a tutor professionally, but but in, in my life, the, the best teachers that I ever had were always people who sort of found a way to bring out knowledge that to some degree had already sort of been present within me um, or knowledge that perhaps I knew deep within myself, but I, I didn't sort of know on a conscious level. Um, and I was really just very um, moved by what you said that in so many ways, this is so similar on a much higher, you know, the, the prophets operating on, on kind of a grander, higher level as those who bring out this awareness of, of our fitra. Um, and, and, in so doing, they then enable us to connect um, at, the, at the highest level of reality, you know, to our, to our creator. Um, so, so I was, I, I found that to be a very um, helpful connection that you made. Thank you. Thank you, Jazakallah Khair, for sharing uh, this beautiful comment. Indeed, I think um, that's what we are all looking for. We are all looking to be the best version of ourselves and um, in this journey, anything that help us get there is, um, I think, uh, what the purpose of our existence is also all about. So, alhamdulillah to, um, I guess, uh, the divine message and in the institution of messengership, uh, only through that does the human being prosper 
um, to fulfill the purpose of their existence. Thank you. And I'll just uh, scan the room and see if there's any other comments or questions from anyone. At any point, feel free to raise your hand. If nobody has anything to say, that's okay. We can move on to the next paragraph. Did anyone ever appear in the world more worthy and more in possession of the above mentioned qualities and functions than Muhammad, the Arabian prophet? May peace and blessings be upon him. Did anyone ever appear in the world more worthy and more in possession of the above mentioned qualities and functions than Muhammad, the Arabian prophet? May peace and blessings be upon him. Has time ever shown us one more fitting and suited to the rank of messengerhood and the task of conveying God's message? No, by no means. He is the master of all messengers, the foremost of all prophets, the leader of all pure ones, the closest to God of all those who have drawn near unto him, the most perfect of all creatures, the monarch of all guides to righteousness. Quite apart from the countless indications of his prophethood, deriving from more than a thousand miracles, such as the splitting of the moon and the flowing of water from his fingers, that all scholars unanimously confirm the supreme miracle of the glorious Quran, an ocean of truth in a book miraculous in 40 different respects. Is itself enough to demonstrate his prophethood as clearly as the sun? Since we discussed the 40 different aspects of the Quran's miraculousness in other treatises, particularly the 25th word, we curtail our discussion of the matter here. So, yeah, I think uh, this uh, pinpoints again to uh, what Brother Ali shared as well in terms of um, the messenger being trained by the creator of the universe, not only to benefit from his or her existence, but also to be a representative of um, the message of the creator of the universe in human form for all of us to benefit from. So um, I think the author um, is saying that if anyone is interested more in the details of um, how can I understand the miracles that we hear, um, uh, you know, up in the air or, you know, in religious scholarship, how can I interpret these miracles and apply it practically to my life, then definitely um, everyone should be checking out the 25th word uh, from Nursi. Um, it has a really strong and thorough and lengthy piece on the miraculousness of the Quran. So that's definitely worth, um, inshallah, checking out at your own time. And uh, let me just see, there's something on the chat from Agabe. Agabe, would you like to read your question? If not, then I can read it for you. So, Agabe is asking, how do we reconcile this explanation of messengership and universe with resurrection? It seems in introduction part, the author does not mention about resurrection. Very good question, Agabe. <laughs> um, I was wondering about that as well. I'm like, wait a minute, this 10th word is about resurrection and it's been, I don't know how many weeks, maybe 
months, we've been going over this piece from the author. And so suddenly, why this jump to messengership? And so you're saying, starting from the introduction part, yes, um, that's um, very um, valid concern. And I think we briefly touched upon it as well last time where I think one of the friends mentioned how it's interesting that the author is, although we're talking about resurrection, but the way the author is presenting the human condition, our case here is through uh, our experiences of what we observe and experience. So definitely um, when we conclude something to be absolute, not of the nature of this universe, then, um, you know, there is this um, feeling about what we refer to as a beautiful contradiction where we say, oh, thank you for providing me all this, but then you're going to slaughter me later on, you know, after maybe hundred years or something, but then I'm enjoying here. So this doesn't sit well with me. What's the point of existence then? So definitely there seems to be like a connection or a communication, but I, I cannot understand or I cannot really grasp then the meaning of, um, you know, what all this points to. And so definitely when I feel bewildered with what I experience, and it's, it is a contradiction within me. I'm like, thank you for, you know, providing me all this. We enjoy our youth, middle age, old age, and um, so on. But then at the end, like, what is the end result? So we definitely feel bewildered. That's the human condition. And so then we, we are made in a way where we have these questions. So the one who's made us with these questions are like the engineer who makes a machine Right, he makes sure that um, the machine comes with a manual uh, update and so on. So, same thing with us. We, uh, the creator of the universe, must employ somebody to help solve this contradiction that you and I experience. So, there must be a verbal communication from the creator of the universe. Uh, through a human being so we can make sense of this um, topic of resurrection where def definitely what does um, this existence point to? What does resurrection mean at the end of the day? And so there is a resurrection, small r resurrection that all of us experience um, on a day-to-day, -day, um, just uh, the moment. Uh, ago is gone. Um, you know, it's been 50 minutes on the, with the discussion is gone. And so we are being constantly resurrected, but then we definitely do notice um, a capital R resurrection. And so uh, how does that tie in with this topic of messengership? And I see Ali Murmur has his hand up. So I'll um, go give in to Brother Ali. Go ahead, please. Ali Murmur, go ahead, please. I see your hand up. So since no one is really making comments, so I just want to jump in. Now we understand that we are reading the introduction now. Just we are we're going to deep jump into the sea now, sea of resurrection, how we should make sense of it how we should benefit from the fact that resurrection is going to happen. What, how is it related to my reality? And how am I going to prepare myself for this? The simple example, very simple example, I love them. Even the primary school or the five years old child should understand so that I, uh, I am such a person. So I don't understand the complicated examples. That is, uh, that is also another aspect of the Quran really gives an extremely simple example. People may say, oh, God is giving this simple example. 
That's what the Quran itself says. We give the simplest example for human beings to understand. But some people say, what does it mean? Really, the simplest example? We are really highly quali qualified intellectual beings. We need more complicated examples. No, it is just the purpose is to understand the reality, not to have an uh, intellectual expertise to make uh, uh, complicated reasons. No, the Quran speaks to general public. So we have to make it. There's a school. You are taken by your parents to the school. You don't know what's going on. Just you are encouraged. I mean, it's an uh, instinct of the creator to, in human being that we really love learning. So we went there, we go there and we learn. And what we don't know, why, why are we in the elementary school, for example? And then later on, later on, later on, we said, oh, I'm going to specialize in my education. I will become a doctor. I will become an, a musician or I will become an, I don't know, whatever this uh, liter literature man and uh, novel writers and uh, uh, graphic designers, something like this. Lots of uh, interest areas for human beings are open here because the universe, the human capacity is so immense. You can do everything. Universe is full of truth, jewels, jewelries. You can discover one of them. But go ahead. Uh, that is wonderful uh, uh, way of seeing the universe and seeing that we are really not expected to be an expert on everything, but at least one or two things. So we go to school and then said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be this and that. And the professor says, no, no, I'm teaching you this. I am teaching you that. And but I, it, he insists that I have to be careful in the class. I have to pay attention to it. I may say, I may say that's human being. Human beings have tongues. They can speak everything they want. They are free to speak, but truth or not. I may say, why do you insist me to teach this? Why do you, why do they ask, ask, ask me to come to the school and educate myself? The professor says, but you have to prepare yourself for a life. So after the graduation, what are you going to do? Now we have to do a profession. That's what we have to have a stable, satisfactory life in this world. That is the purpose of this secular education system. So uh, then we also ask the same question. What are we going to do with this instruction and bother ourselves? Say, enjoy yourself, take your time. But after the graduation, you will see if you enjoy yourself in the canteen, and chat away with your friends <laughs> and uh, waste your time. You will see on the after the graduation day, you will say, "What am I going to do now? I am out of the out of this school." So it is a simple example, but explains everything. We understand that we have been given such an enormous abilities to learn many, many subjects, sub-subjects, sub-sub-subjects, the infinite subjects, even the simplest uh, department has many subdivisions there uh, to, be, uh, to educate people so that they will become experts on some parts of the things. So that is how human beings develop. We are studying just the second indication, and then we will see that the fourth indication We'll hit the point, we'll hit the point why all of these are related to resurrection. Because graduation day, after graduating from the school, we jump into the into real life that we present our qualities as ex expected, supposed, uh, supposed that we are really, de we developed ourselves in one or two areas so that we will entertain that. That is the purpose of education. That is the purpose of the, the, taking the training there under the leadership of the professor. Now, we are preparing this and we are going there. Don't worry about it. One thing attracted my attention, the expression the author used universal worship must be performed. And the 
the relationship between the speech of God, which is in the case of Islam, the Quran, maybe in the case of Judaism and Christianity, Hebrew Bible, but something, some uh, text which says I am divine inspired. Uh, how is it called? The word. Oh, didn't come. What was it? Divinity? No, no. Uh, the general word for the sacred books. <laughs> scriptures? Scriptures. Yeah, scriptures. Correct. Thank you very much. So, any scripture. So, this scripture uh, looks like the textbook. But without the teacher, we, we may have the textbook. It is really hard to educate ourselves. Uh, the prophets are definitely needed. And the prophets edu must educate other students. Of course, he is prepared under the, if you like, under the observation and teaching of the engineer, going back to our previous example, engineer. And then he has to train the other people as well in order to perform the textbook in the best way and make the uh, well, enable the people train the people in order to practice the universal worship what does it mean worship universal worship of course none of us here uh, attending this class will reduce worship to only praying fasting these are really important fundamentals but universal worship means if it is possible for me as much as possible i have to learn how to really use my life 24 7 in order to be in connection with my creator and act as he wants me to act. That is universal worship. So universal worship is not expected from me because I may be an expert on one or two subjects, not much, but the teacher who is trained, educated, prepared, the instructor by the engineer, it means the creator of the universe, creator of human beings, must have the ability to perform the universal worship. It means responding back, using human qualities in the best way, which is possible in the forms of this universe, the way this universe is created, best way, so that he will be able to teach and train people around him in his practical life. Some of them are in mathematics, some of them are in physics, chemistry, some of them are in astronomy, some of them in biology, art, uh, art uh, or uh, music, maybe. Uh, uh, Drawing best pictures, how they are, how are they called? Training in every aspect, so that the people should be uh, specialized in one two areas, because God prepares the Creator of the universe, prepares the prophets, messengers, to be able to teach every kind of human capacity so that they, they will also continue teaching the others, but every kind of human capacity uh, can only be taught by the creator. But after the person employed to fulfill the uh, mission of messengership, he will only teach certain people in certain area according to their interest area. It, if you like, the uni university has been established 
by the university means the universe established by uh, the owner of the world, owner of the university, and a chancellor is employed. And the chancellor uh, teach or appoints other professors in different departments. But the chancellor, chancellor has to he has to know all the uh, functions of the different departments, subdivisions of the departments, so that he has to organize everything. That is why the prophets are expected to perform universal worship. It means really uh, put in practice the textbook, textbook of uh, God, the Creator, and put into practice the content of the textbook in every aspect. So he will teach the people according to their tendencies or their choices in every department so that uh, the sp uh, they will spread the content of the textbook, which is the uh, in the case of Islam, the Quran, the, he, they will teach the Quran from, from one aspect, from another aspect, from another aspect. That is why we see thousands of commentaries on the Quran written by uh, the students of the students of the prophets in sequences. Still continuing, still continuing, and no one is fed up with it because it is so concise. Although the examples are so simple, but uh, the literature value of it is so concise. Everybody finds out new things in it, new things in it, and it is flourishing and flourishing and flourishing, and the human beings are benefiting from it. In order to educate the people, graduation is going to take place, everybody will get his degree, and in the real life, we will practice it. We will put into practice, which is called, God willing, paradise, life in paradise. We have to practice our realizations of the creation, our realizations of the qualities of the creator, as much as we did here, educated, learned here, and the reality of this infinite absolute qualities will be presented to us so that we will be able to understand and we will be able to appreciate the qualities of the manifestations of the qualities, names of God in the hereafter, next creation. That's why next creation is inevitable. If there is no more uh, uh, type of creation, after I die, everything becomes and falls into the pieces, meaninglessness, and I will be completely disappointed with, the, with my creator. I will say, hey, you created me with these expectations, and you turned the end of my life into a compost. That is an insult to yourself, not to me. Because that is the nonsense, the most nonsense things a wise man can do it. You gave me this ability. Would you, would you like me to call you the nonsense creator? <laughs> so it is contradictory. So I have to say definitely the wise, wise creator definitely must be planning something so that I will entertain what I learned in this creation as far as my relationship with the, uh, the creator is concerned, which is called worship, worshiping the creator. That is what it's all about. What we are going to learn here, how to appreciate the qualities of the creator and I have the ability to do that. I am given the ability to do that. So uh, why am I doing all this? Ah, in order to entertain the result of it. That's why I have to learn. 
I have to try to get the highest degree in my uh, education so that I will be most successful. As the Quran says, Muflihun, most successful in my next creation. If there was no next creation, everything will turn into a trash and I am given the ability to blame the creator. Are you crazy? What are you doing with me? If there was no resurrection, I will be very angry <laughs> you know, with him not right now, not after I die. After I die, it's too late right now. If there was no news of resurrection through the message of the prophets, I would be extremely unhappy, miserable, despaired person in the world. I would have no excitement for living in this world. It is better to die and finish it. At the end, it will be anyway meaningless. But I don't. I don't want. That is how I am created. This way of being created is the sign that definitely there will be as a resurrection. It means a new type of creation that I will entertain my human capacities in it is full in their fullest sense. Thank you. I know it is time is very late. Sorry, I'm sorry. Inshallah, I mean, uh, definitely our human capacity extends to beyond what this uh, universe offers. So there must be a continuity of our existence beyond this realm. Otherwise, uh, our hopes and desires will just be futile and will be just crushed. So, alhamdulillah, this was uh, very enlightening. Thank you all for coming in and uh, contributing, just being here <laughs> um, in good company. So I think we can stop here for today, inshallah, next week. Um, the moderator can pick up from the third indication of page 74. Alhamdulillah, this was very beneficial. Jazakallah, um, everyone. Bismillah rahman rahim Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka antal alimul hakim. Glory be unto you. We have no knowledge save except that which you taught us. Indeed, you are all knowledgeable, all wise. وَأَخْلُوا دَوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ بِهُرْمَةِ سِرْ رَسُورَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ